This is the improved combat shelter from the US Army. I bought it from Coleman's Military Surplus Online. It has never been issued. That's why I bought this specific one. And you know what? It smells like vomit. What is going on guys? Adam Katz for the Hardcore Camping Gear channel. The channel where we explore and review the camping gear that you need to be self-contained, self-reliant, and most of all comfortable camping in the outdoors without having to spend tens of thousands of dollars on an expensive RV or travel trailer. In this episode, we are looking at the improved combat shelter from the US Army. So I'm still kind of airing this thing out. I actually took it outside a couple nights ago uh, before I set it up and just kind of draped it out over some chairs on the patio and let it sit overnight. And then I set it up and let it sit overnight open uh, just to kind of air it out some more. And that helped a little bit. Uh, this morning I sprayed it with Lysol. That helped a little bit more. About half an hour ago I sprayed it with Febreze. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna try and sleep in it tonight and hopefully it won't be too overpowering. So my idea was to put a wool blanket on the bottom of the tent and then put this Thermarest Ridge Crest on top of the wool blanket and then the four inch milliard pad mattress thing on top of that. And then the, uh, the British military sleeping bag that I'm gonna be reviewing in another video on top of that. The problem is here, let me set up the camera and I'll, I'll show you. <laughs> so I got rid of the milliard pad, the four inch pad, and I just got this inflatable. This is like an old REI coil. So I'm gonna show you guys this one particular stake that they've oriented right down here in the middle that these two don't seem to be too much of a problem. It's the one in the middle, I'm gonna pull that one out because every time I get in and out of this thing, I end up uh, poking myself in the knee. So that may be an issue. <coughs> You can see there's really, you know, there's there's space, and this opens up, I'll show you later, uh, so you can put your gear uh, underneath the rain fly on that side of the tent, but it's pretty small. You know, the, a lot of the YouTube reviews make it seem a lot bigger than it actually is, and even with taking out that four inch milliard pad, there really isn't enough room to sit up, to sit up in this, which is kind of my main criticism so far. So this thing is just not made for a man of my size. So you do have this little vestibule area that gives you a little bit more space. I'm gonna come down in here. That's about, maybe about four, four hand lengths. Um, but the big problem is that you're in it here. And say in the middle of the night, you want to take your sweatshirt off you really can't you know especially with this up you can't you don't have enough room so you're getting you're getting a great ab workout so let's go over some of the pros and the cons of this tent 
Number one, the first thing that I really like about it is that the zippers are excellent. As with most military surplus type gear, you typically have idiot proof zippers, zippers that don't typically stick or get hung up on the material. That's a really important thing, especially when it's super cold outside. You don't want to be messing around with a stuck zipper for 10 or 15 minutes or maybe having to just live with it being stuck. So in that sense, the tent is, is very, very good. The materials of the tent also, as you might expect from its pedigree, very, very good. When you zip it up, you get pretty much complete blackout. So if you did want to use this tent for, you know, like sleeping during the day for some reason, uh, you have the ability to do that because it doesn't allow any light to get through. That's a great thing. Um, obviously because of the pedigree, you know that it's pretty much bomb proof. It does have the bathtub floor. The footprint, uh, I guess depending on how you look at it, is very, very small and low to the ground. Would be great for stealth camping. Now, on to the negatives. And keep in mind guys, if you have this tan, if you love this tan, I don't mean this is any criticism of you. This is just one guy's opinion from spending two nights camping in this tent. I uh, did not enjoy my experience with this tent. I can tell you that. I'm 6'1", about 180 to 185 pounds. This tent is too small for a man my size. And in talking with some military veteran friends, uh, a lot of them noted the same thing, that if you were 5'9 or under, this tent would probably work very well for you. If you're my size or bigger, there's much better options on the market. Um, the, first, the first big problem with it is that you really need an extra four to six inches of headspace in order to fully sit up to be able to, for example, put on your shoes or maybe kind of like do the arch back thing where you, if your mat got a little bit misadjusted and you want to put it back under you. Uh, or to take off or put on a, a layer or a sweatshirt or something. Um, so that I found very, very difficult. The second thing is there's no internal storage of any kind. There's no pockets. There's no place to hook an overhead light. And I took my little Uko Sprout light thinking that I could hang it up above me at least. That way I could see what I was doing when I was kind of in a semi crunch position to readjust myself. And uh, nowhere to hook the light. So you end up having to have the light on the ground next to you. It's a real headache, real hassle. Uh, number two, there really isn't that much space, which, you know, I guess maybe you wouldn't expect from a tent this size, although comparable ultralight backpacking tents, in my experience, do have uh, more optimization of space because they come with more pockets. And so that means you have your water bottle, not to be confused with your pee bottle, maybe your glasses case, whatever other gear you may have have to be like basically just out in the open right above your head. Now keep in mind, this was a tent designed for military use. And I guess the thought process behind that design was that the soldiers would have all their gear in their bag and the bag would be out the back porch area that I just showed you, porch area, um, not taking up the actual living space of the tent. And they would put all of their gear, whatever it may be, keys, mags, glasses, um, you know, hat, extra sock, whatever it is would be in the bag. So they didn't maybe need uh, pockets and stuff. I, that's my only thought, that's my only thought as to why it was designed this way. It doesn't seem like it would have cost that much more to add at least a place to hook a light or, or at least, you know, one pocket, but it doesn't have that. And so because of that, for the price point, uh, I paid $200 for this primarily because it was unissued and I wanted something that you know, for a bomb-proof tent, uh, I wanted it completely new. For the money, though, I think there are much better options because, bottom line, this really isn't a tent. It's more of a bivy tent. And as far as bivy tents go, I feel there's more, there's better options on the market, like, for example, the Snug Pack Ionosphere. Uh, so for the same type of performance and basically the same price. Again, I paid 200 bucks for this. I think you can get a, a Snug Pack Ionosphere for about well, roughly 175 or so. Um, for that matter, the, the Marmot one person ultralight backpacking tent also in the same price category. Now, one of the benefits that maybe I'm overlooking, I keep glancing over here because the tent's set up right beyond the camera, is that obviously because of the pedigree, you, you do have a bomb proof tent. You have a tent that it's a four season tent. It's a one person four season tent, which means that you can use it in the snow, you can use it in the rain, 
You can use it basically under any type of environment, more or less. Um, at six and a half pounds, it's about twice the weight of what most commercial options you could you could have. For example, like the Snug Pack on Honesphere, I think is around three pounds. Um, the Marmot even less. So six and a half pounds, I bought it with the idea that you know it packs up fairly small. I can throw it in the trunk of a sedan and just have it if I need it. Um, that being said, I struggle with how many uh, potential scenarios I would need a tent like that uh, in the back of my car. And it's too heavy for me to take backpacking. If I was going backpacking, I definitely want something in the three pound range, not in the six and a half pound range. So, you know, if you're a soldier, I guess it's good. But I just think if you're gonna drop the 200 bucks on a small one person stealth camping type tent, I think there are better options on the market. Now, if it works for you, it works for you. I salute you. But uh, for me, I had a miserable two nights sleeping in this tent, predominantly because I just didn't have enough space to completely sit up and I didn't have any storage or area where I can hook my light. If there was a way to fix those two things, now I, I could jerry rig something up, but you know, at this price point, it's like, I shouldn't have to really. So if I'd spend 50 bucks, you know, if you got this at a garage sale and you spent 50 bucks, you could overlook all of that. You can put in your own, you know, storage solution. Uh, you can somehow maybe rig up something to hang a light. But at the $200 price point, it simply just doesn't compete. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate your support. If you'd like links to any of the gear that we review on this channel, check out hardcorecampinggear.com. And most importantly, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and then the notification bell after you hit the red subscribe button. Be sure to like, share, and most importantly, comment below because I'd really be curious to hear your thoughts if you have experience with this tent, either in the military or in a civilian context. would really be curious about your thoughts and if you had some of the same issues that I experienced with it. Take care, guys.